so now we have um, introduced our sampling in time. with um, x of n. So the question is now, so what effect what effect has this on the frequency spectrum? So we know that our spectrum only runs now from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 because of normalized frequencies. But um, so the question is, so how does it actually look like? So we could rephrase this as, so we've got our XF here and we've got our XA of F here. So that's our analog spectrum. And this is our spectrum from resulting from sampling. So the question is now, so how, how do we get to this X of F here? So we've got our analog spectrum and we would like to know what is the result of the x of f. So how do we do that? So how do we tackle this now to find out our x of f here? And so the idea is the following. We've got our x of n and this is our sequence which exists for real. And so we can synthesize this here with our inverse Fourier transform 0.5 to plus 0.5 and this is our x of f here, our sampled Fourier spectrum e2 j 2 pi f n df. Yeah, so that's the one we've written down on the previous slides. But this must be equivalent to our analog Fourier transform here. So if we do something like xA of f and then e2 j2 pi n and then write this as f divided by fs to have our normalized frequency also here df then they should be both both identical. Yeah, so that's our continuous spectrum. And that's the spectrum from our sample domain. So the task is now simply we would like to solve solve for x of f just to find out what's the final result out of this. So we just need to find out what is x of f. So in, so in order to do that we need to apply a couple of tricks. So the first trick is or the first idea is makes the integration compatible. So just now on the one side we had normalized frequencies, on the other one the um, analog frequencies, but we know that f divided by fs, this, that this is our normalized frequency. So we can write essentially 1 over fs but minus fs half to plus fs half. So 
machen wir jetzt fs half und dann x f divided by fs, so normalized frequencies, and then e to j 2 pi n, and then again our definition of a normalized frequency, and integrated this over the analog frequency. And this is still equals to minus infinity to plus infinity x x a of f e to j 2 pi oh, of course this is in wrong order here n f divided by f s d f so now we have made this compatible here so we have we have the integration variables compatible here now the other problem is obviously here we have got an integration running from only minus fs half to plus fs half remember normalized frequencies so from minus nyquist frequency to plus nyquist frequency whereas here it's from minus infinity to plus infinity so so the next idea or the next trick let's call this trick the next trick is we we take this integral here and this here and divide it and into chunks of width fs you see already why why this is why this is a great idea because if we are dividing this here these integrals here in chunks of fs then we're getting the same length as here so we just use an, use a sum for this and um, modify this so let's take this this equation here and um, write this down here again yeah so minus infinity plus plus infinity x a of f and then e to j 2 pi n f divided by f s so this is not there and so now let's do the following let's start a sum let's just think about the the index index numbers a bit later here and um, run the integral just from half f s and start it at minus half f s so what we have done here so we have have the compatibility between these two yeah and now we are introducing an index number k fs and adding it also down here and then having the run the k running from minus infinity to plus infinity as a trick so so we still have the same x a of f here and we are also the rest is identical to this one here f divided by f s df with this trick here we have divided divided up this integral here which was running just from minus infinity to plus infinity in chunks running from minus from half f s to plus half f s and then this repeated infinite number of times but the single integration here is now compatible with this integration here in our sample domain so, so as the next step what we just need to do is we need to shuffle around the summation sign and the integration sign a bit just to make this comparable with this integral here so let's do that so let's just um, write this down here again so the k equals minus infinity plus infinity and then we had this integral here running from fs half and starts from minus fs half and then we had the index k fs and k fs here and that was our x a of f e to j 2 pi n f divided by f s this was just from the previous slide here so that's the f and um, so the idea is the first step is here to 
get rid of this one here because obviously we would like to have this only this integration boundary here yeah remove this here and the trick is we're moving this factor here into the integration yeah so we pop it essentially in here and in here so we move it remove it here and move it into these two parts here yeah so so this gives us so let's write this down here again that's a bit involved now so so we what we do here is we start again from minus fs half and reaching fs half here but um, so we got rid of this one here but we move it now as a shift operation in here so this means we are just subtracting this here minus k fs and um, now the same the same has to be done has to be done obviously here so we have we have our exponential here j 2 pi n and now the f the f is here the same idea that we have um, f minus k fs divided by fs and then df so if we are if we're looking at these terms here so we've got here this negative term here so this multiplies with this 2 pi n and this k f s but this but this term here this part always with the exponential gives us one so therefore this can be can be omitted here and so what we left here is just the, the formula so we can get rid of this here so we have got just the f factor here and here we've got the f minus k f s so as a last step now we just move the summation sign in it here let's try this here to keep this formula here here inside that um, we can we can now take take this formula here our our result we have reached here and um, compare this now to our previous formula here so where we where we had 1 over fs and the integral was running from minus fs half to fs half and this was x and remember this was our sampled frequency spectrum here and then we had also e to j 2 pi n s f divided by f s df so now the interesting thing is here so so obviously they are identical here yeah so so they are completely identical here so the um, the integration boundaries here these ones are identical yeah so we so we can basically directly identify with them so now the difference the difference is only here in the middle yeah so so that our x corresponds to the x a in this in this form here so and therefore what we what we can write is x and then this is f divided by fs so by the, by identifying these terms here and then this equals to fs because we should not forget this fs term here and then we we write k equals minus infinity to plus infinity here and then this is xa f minus k f s or if we want to get rid of because this is here essentially f our normalized frequency here we can also write x of s x of f and then this is again f s our sum here and then x a square brackets 
f minus k fs and then square bracket but um, important is now this formula here we have reached here which links us links us our analog frequencies to our sampled frequencies here remember this was our analog spectrum so our analog spectrum generates our sampled spectrum here sampled spectrum in this way so we see that the analog spectrum generates an infinite number of copies spaced by fs in the sampled spectrum